So okay, welcome to part 2 of this video. So what we want to do is we want to prove that if we have two sequences, uh, a sequence AN which uh, converges in our metric space on the limit L1 and a sequence BN uh, in our metric space which converges on a limit L2, what we want to prove is that the limit in the real line of the sequence of the distance between AN and BN is going to converge on the distance between L1 and L2. So in pictures what we have is two sequences, A1, A2, here's the sequence A converging to a limit L1, here's the sequence B converging to a, a limit L2, and what we, are, what we are dealing with is the sequence, uh, the distance between A1 and B1 here, the distance between A2 and B2, the distance between A3 and B3, etc, etc, and it's going to converge on the distance between L1 and L2. Okay, so uh, a way that we can uh, prove this is, um, is as follows. So I'll show you a way that we, um, initially it will seem a little bit unmotivated, but you'll have to just uh, bear that for a few moments. Okay, so we can use the triangle inequality on the distance between AN and BN. So we have some arbitrary point here, uh, in fact let's draw it separately, let's have AN and BN. And we are calculating the distance between the AN and BN, and that this is the nth term of this sequence here, okay? Uh, and we know by the triangle inequality, so we have over here the limit L1 and over here the limit L2, we know that this is going to be less than or equal to the distance between AN and L1. Uh, so, uh, get my coloured pens out, I love this bit. Uh, so, here we go, here's the distance between AN and BN. Uh, the distance between AN and L1 is this distance over here. So uh, if I colour that in blue, so that's this blue one here, uh, and then so basically what I'm saying is that the di uh, we're going to say that this, this distance here is less than or equal to the sum of going round this longer route basically, um, plus the distance between L1 and L2. So we'll add that one on distance between L1 and L2. Oh dear, whoops, stable. Okay, uh, so uh, that's uh, this bit here there, and uh, plus the distance between uh, L2 and BN down there, which is this distance here. So if I've got my last pen, the yellow one. Okay, so there we go. That is, um, that's how we're using the triangle inequality. So, this sequence basically, the distance between AN and BN, is always going to be less than or equal to this sequence. This is also a sequence. We could view uh, this as a sequence. Uh, the distance between L1 and L2 is fixed, but AN and BN vary as the sequence goes on, as N gets bigger and bigger. So we could view this as a sequence. So basically what we have is, if we draw the real line here, we have our arbitrary point, our nth term of this sequence up here, and then we have our nth term of this sequence, so let's call this sequence Sn, and let's, in fact, no, let's call that sequence Tn, the less important one, and let's call this one Sn. So this is the, S, the nth term of the sequence Sn, and above it is the nth term of the sequence Tn, which is always going to be greater than or equal to, potentially they're equal to, but what that means is if this, the terms of this sequence are always less than or equal to the terms of this sequence, then the limit of this sequence has to be less than or equal to the limit of this sequence. So, uh, we get that the limit as of Sn as n approaches infinity is less than or equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of Tn. And basically, if these terms are bigger than uh, these terms, are bigger than or equal to these terms forever, then it implies that, uh, because that's true for all n, uh, then it implies that um, that this sequence must converge on something greater than or equal to uh, the limit of this sequence. Because if the limit of this sequence was bigger than the limit of this sequence, then it would lead to a contradiction of this being true, basically, because there would be some point after which this was not true. Okay, uh, so... Uh, uh, right, so, um, basically if we just fill that in then now, uh, no we can't go onto the back of that, so, over here we go, right, so we'll keep this formula in sight, so now what we know is that uh, the limit as n approaches infinity of the distance between an and bn 
here, this sequence, is less than or equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of this side, basically, the distance between a n and l1, plus the distance between l1 and l2, plus the distance between l2 and b n. But it's a basic property of the real no of uh, sequences of real nine of real numbers. So uh, recall from your first initial course in real analysis that we can split up this sequence into the limit as n approaches infinity of the distance between a n and l one plus the limit as n approaches infinity of the distance between l one and l two plus the limit as n approaches infinity of the distance between L2 and Bn. Uh, so that's just the fact that the sum of the, the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits. Okay, uh, now this is the limit of a constant. So another basic property from real analysis, this is just equal to the distance between L1 and L2 because the limit of a constant, so the limit of 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, two forever is just 2. Okay, uh, and also uh, we uh, now need the second definition of the convergence of a sequence in an arbitrary metric space. So remember one of the definitions of the limit um, as n approaches infinity of this sequence a n being equal to L1 uh, in our abstract metric space was to say that the limit as n approaches infinity of the sequence of real numbers, which is the distance between a n and l1, so you can construct a corresponding sequence of real numbers, that that limit has to be equal to zero. And similarly, so basically this implies this, and similarly the limit as n approaches infinity of b n being equal to l2 in our abstract metric space implies that the limit of the corresponding sequence of real numbers, which is the distance between b n and l2, that that is also equal to zero. Okay, so we can fill those two things in, that this is equal to zero and this is equal to zero, and we'll get that the limit as n approaches infinity of the distance between a n and b n is r, uh, less than or equal to the distance between L1 and L2. What a anticlimax. We were, were hoping it was going to be equal to, we've got less than or equal to. So we're halfway there. Now what we do is we do the same thing, but from the other one's perspective. So basically we go back to this picture here, and instead of saying that the distance between a n and b n, which is this one here, is less than the sum of the distances around here, instead we say that the distance between l1 and l2 is less than or equal to the distance of going around all the others, the sum of the distances around the others. So basically we use this picture again to say that the distance between l1 and l2 is less than or equal to the distance between l1 and a n, plus the distance between a n and b n, plus the distance between b n and, um, and l2. Okay, so let me just add the colours to make it more convincing. The distance between L1 and L2 is that colour, uh, so uh, that distance there. Uh, the distance between L1 and AN is this blue colour. The distance between AN and BN is this colour. And the distance between BN and L2 is this colour. Okay, so... That is holds true by the triangle inequality of metric spaces, so I uh, can apply that result. Now, uh, I've got this sequence here, this is a sequence, and I'm saying that it's greater than or equal to, at every single point, uh, if we draw a real line, basically I've got some number here, the distance between L1 and L2, and I'm saying I've got a new sequence here, which we'll call, what yeah, letter haven't we used, we'll use UN. So this is a sequence UN, and all of the terms of this sequence are greater than, I don't know where they are, but they are greater than or equal to this term, so they cannot go below this term. So basically that tells me something, it tells me that the limit as n approaches infinity of this sequence UN must be greater than or equal to the distance between L1 and L2. So basically if I take the limit of that sequence, so now I can get rid of that, and I take the limit of that sequence, then the limit as n approaches infinity of, let's put all of those things in, the distance between L1, a n, uh, plus the distance between a n, b n, plus the distance between b n and L2, this is a great big uh, 
sum of three sequences, that has to be greater than or equal to the distance between L1 and L2, right? So, now split it up again, uh, the limit of a sum is the sum of the limits, so we've got the limit as n approaches infinity of the distance between L1 and An, plus the limit as n approaches infinity of the distance between An and Bn, plus the dis limit as n approaches infinity of the distance between Bn and L2. Okay, and we get that that is greater than or equal to the distance between L1 and L2. And again, what we just apply is uh, the fact that these limits, uh, for the same reason of up here, these limits, this is the, this limit is the same as this limit because of the symmetry of the um, of the metric. So the distance between a n and l one is the same as the distance between l one and a n. So this limit has to be equal to zero, and the same is true of this limit because of this second one here. So these two are equal to zero, and what we get is that the limit as n approaches infinity of the distance between a n and b n is greater than or equal to the distance between L1 and L2. Okay, bingo! So what we have now, if we put, if we look at, uh, let me circle them, look at this inequality and look at this inequality. I have that this thing, this limit of, uh, as n approaches infinity, the distance between a n and b n is less than or equal to the distance between L1 and L2. And down here, I have that the limit uh, uh, the same, this same limit, this exact same limit, is greater than or equal to the distance between L1 and L2. There is only one way that both of those statements can be true, which is that the limit as n approaches infinity, oh dear, what happened to that limit? Limit as n approaches infinity of the distance between a n and b n is in fact equal to the distance between L1 and L2. So there you go. Uh, if you construct that sequence, uh, the sequence of real numbers, which is the distance between each of the each of the terms in those two convergent sequences a and b, uh, then basically it will converge on being equal to the distance between the two limits of those sequences, and that's one of the few things that we can do uh, if you give me two sequences, because I cannot add them together, I cannot multiply them by scalars. None of that is yet defined on our abstract metric space. We will need algebraic structure to go any further.